Simple harmonic motion is also known as vibrational motion or oscillatory motion. When the object moves back and forth about a fixed point, that's how you identify simple harmonic motion. That's why we're here. One of the most powerful examples of simple harmonic motion is the operation of a steam locomotive. Well, we spent the last little bit talking about mass and spring, circular motion, and pendulums, and using those as demonstrations of simple harmonic motion. Well, because we've just defined them all as examples of simple harmonic motion, or SHM, we can unify all of them under two terms. And those two terms are called period and frequency. Now, a period is... A period is the time it takes for one back and forth motion. Now every single one of the motions that we've talked about has demonstrated, and that was the first thing we looked at, does the object move back and forth between two points? So the period is the time it takes for one of those cycles. Now frequency is the number of back and forths in one unit of time. So it is the inverse of period. It is the number of back and forths in one unit of time. Now that unit of time might be the second, it might be a minute, an hour, a day, any unit of time, number of back and forths that it makes in that period. And so period and frequency are two terms that will be able to unify all our demonstrations of simple harmonic motion. Now period is symbolized with a capital T. And period is a unit of time. So the units of time, the SI unit of time, is the second. So the unit is the second, with the symbol being a capital T. Now frequency is the number of back and forths in one unit of time. Now before I talk about frequency, let's relate these two. You at least need the symbol. The symbol for frequency is lowercase f. And the unit we'll talk about in just one second. The relationship between period and time is that period is inversely proportional and related to the frequency. Now this is a very important relationship. Okay? Now because frequency is one period is one over frequency, well that subsequently means that frequency is one over time. Well, if time is measured in seconds, then frequency is measured in one over seconds. Now, one over seconds is commonly referred to as hertz. So the units of frequency are one over seconds, or hertz. And this can also be, hertz can also be written as seconds to the negative one. Okay? And so period and frequency allow us to unify everything that we've learned about mass and spring, circular motion, and pendulum motion. All three of these can be defined from a period and frequency point of view. Why? Because every single one of them demonstrates the type of motion that is back and forth between two points. Well, the easiest to begin with is circular motion. So we'll start with circular motion, defining period and frequency. Now recall that we had the motion of a ball moving around a circle tangentially. Now we stated that the record player was moving, the record player was moving with a constant angular velocity. So as this ball went around the circle, 
it had a constant angular velocity. Well, what that means is, from a definition point of view, is that angular velocity is defined as the rate of change of angle. Well, in going around one time, it goes around or covers 2 pi radians. So 2 pi radians are covered in that unit of time, which we call period, because one cycle or one trip around is this distance and it took this much time, we call that the period. Or the period is the time it takes for one, the time it takes for one back and forth motion. Now remember when we talk about circular motion, we were relating the back and forth motion of the shadow. But that back and forth motion of the shadow was related to the circular motion of the ball going around 2 pi radians in one unit of time, or we call the period. Well, it is from this definition right here that we're able to define the period of circular motion. So period is defined as multiply both sides by t, divide by omega, and you have 2 pi over the angular velocity. This is how you define the period of circular motion. Now, because period is inversely related to frequency, putting this 1 over, you end up with frequency equaling 1 over 2 pi. Or if that's, let's see, we can do it this way as well. 2 pi over omega equals, gives us a frequency of omega over 2 pi. Okay, and that is because of the relationship between period and frequency. And so we've defined period and frequency for circular motion. Now, just like we used the mass and the spring, and we recognized that as simple harmonic motion, and we looked at simple harmonic motion for the mass and spring relative to circular motion, we're going to use period and frequency from circular motion to help us understand period and frequency for a mass and a spring. So now let's define the period and frequency for the mass and the spring and the pendulum after that.